Salwete, welcome to Beginner's Latin Lesson 7. This lesson concludes the three-part mini-series on irregular verbs. You'll remember that in Lessons 5 and 6, we considered the irregular verbs sum, I am, possum, I am able, volo, I wish, nolo, I do not wish, and malo, I prefer. In the first part of this lesson, I will discuss a property of verbs we haven't previously covered. In the second half of the lesson, I will introduce two more irregular verbs and we will round off the lesson with some practice examples. Here are the three definitions we'll be focusing on this lesson. You will already be familiar with the first one, irregular verb, but there are two new ones. First, the word transitive. This in fact comes from the Latin transitivus, an adjective meaning passing over. Trans is a Latin preposition, which takes a noun in the accusative and means across. Hence, a transitive verb is one which passes its action to one or more objects. An object which is on the receiving end of an action is called a direct object. Take a look at examples 1 and 2. I have highlighted the direct objects in red. Example 1 reads, Femina puelam. Monet. The woman warns the girl. Puelam, the direct object, is in the accusative. The accusative case is used to mark the direct object of a transitive verb. Let's move on to example two. Rex viris gladios dart. Rex is the Latin word for king or ruler. We can see that example 2 differs from example 1, as the word viris is in green. Viris is an indirect object. It is also affected by the action of the transitive verb, but indirectly. Indirect objects typically receive the direct object and are often translated in English as to something or to someone or for something or for someone. In this example, we have the king gives swords to the men. Gladius is the plural accusative of the second declension noun gladius. The swords are the direct object being acted upon by the transitive verb dart, he gives. Wiris is the indirect object which is acted upon by the transitive verb by way of the direct object gladius. It is the men who receive the swords. As you would expect, an intransitive verb is one which does not take a direct object. In example 3, puer in viam ambulat, the boy walks into the street. Into the street tells us where the boy performed the action. It is not receiving the action. Walking, falling, crying, sleeping, sneezing, flying are intransitive. Here is an illustration of direct objects. We have transitive verb represented by a black circle which is acting on the red circle of the direct object. Poeta puelam laudat. The poet praises the girl. In the case of indirect objects we have the transitive verb acting on the direct object and the direct object then acts on the indirect object. So the transitive verb affects the indirect object through the direct object. We have pueri viru epistulam dant. The boys give a letter to the man. The letter is the direct object. The man is the indirect object. It's very important to understand that transitivity is not a property inherent to a verb, but rather one which describes its use in a specific instance. Take, for example, these two sentences. Chris grows flowers in the garden. Chris grows taller every year. We have the same verb and the same subject. However, in the first sentence, Chris grows flowers in the garden, the verb grows has a direct object, flowers, so it's transitive. In the second sentence, Chris grows taller every year. Grows does not have an object. Taller is a comparative adjective describing Chris. Hence, in this example, the verb is intransitive. The ability of a verb to be both transitive and intransitive 
is known as ambitransitivity. Here is the Latin example. Nautai curcum insulam navigant. Here, navigant is intransitive. We also have nautai curcum insulam puelas navigant. Here, the verb is transitive. Puelas, the girls, is the direct object. Now I'm going to introduce two irregular verbs. First, ferro. Ferro means I carry, I bring, I bear, I support. It can also mean I endure. It is a transitive verb, meaning it takes a direct object. For example, in English we could say, I carry a heavy load. It has the principal parts ferre, to carry, tuli, I have carried, and latum, the past participle meaning brought or carried. Let's conjugate this verb in the present tense. Ferro, I carry. Fers, you singular carry. Fert, he, she, it carries. Ferimus, we carry. Fertis, you plural carry. And ferunt, they carry. Now, eu, I go. It is intransitive. It has the principal parts eu, Ire, i, itum. Eu, as you can see, has an alternative third principal part, ivi, which we will explore further when we learn about past tenses. Let's conjugate this verb. Note that with the exception of the first person singular and the third person plural forms, the stem of this verb in the present tense is the letter i. We have, I go, is, you singular go, it, he, she, it goes, imus, we go, itis, you plural go, and eunt, they go. Here are some verbs which are derived from eu. Now for some examples. You will see a Latin sentence and an accompanying illustration. I will read out the Latin and give you about 10 seconds to attempt to translate the sentence into English before I reveal the correct translation. Any vocabulary which we haven't covered will appear at the bottom of the screen. Pueri, poetis, libros, ferunt. Did you get it right? The boys bring books to the poets. You could also say the boys carry books for the poets. Okay, moving on to the second practice example. Vos cum gladis in silvas itis. You, plural, go into the woods with swords. Multum vinum ferimus. We bring much wine. A more natural translation would be, we bring lots of wine. Marcus cum Julia a foro abit. Marcus leaves the forum with Julia. Here is a summary of what has been covered this lesson. We have discussed verb transitivity. A transitive verb is one which takes a direct object. An intransitive verb is one which does not. We have learned about the verbs ferro and eu, including how to conjugate these verbs in the present tense. We have also discussed the transitivity of these verbs. Thank you for watching this lesson.
I hope you enjoyed it.